Hi, I'm Shane. Um, let's get into it. So today I'd like to tell you a little bit about my background and my process. Uh, by this point, you probably have seen my work already. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about me. So when I started in photography, uh, it was just a hobby for a very long time. Uh, then I went to, I started in high school, went to college. Uh, in college, I actually studied sociology and social psychology first and eventually realized it wasn't quite the path for me. Didn't really want to stay in school and become a PhD to become a professor or nor did I feel like I was right to be a social worker. So left, eventually took some class art classes at a community college and that's kind of where I discovered that starting in like the with modern art the last century, uh, in about like the 1890s, all these different ideas about using art to express oneself and uh, express feelings really took off. And it was in that class where I really realized the power of art to speak to the human soul. Um, and then for me, that just changed everything. You know, I realized like, oh, I get it now. Art is psychology in action. It's a way to reach out to people. It's a way to express yourself, express, you know, have others f be seen and be heard. So that changed everything for me. And so, like I said, I've been doing photography since high school, um, but it wasn't until then that I really started to take it seriously. Um, I had been doing what I guess you could call boudoir, of, you know, taking sensual portraits of, you know, ex or, you know, past girlfriends or my friends' girlfriends, um, and then, you know, my other friends. Um, but it was always kind of just an exploration. It wasn't until that point when I realized just how powerful, it, you know, art and photography could be. Um, and that was still quite a ways away from where I'm at now. Um, and so that's kind of my personal background with of how I got into photography and art in general. Um, so I'd like to talk a, a bit about my approach to the process of art. So I think that art has kind of a subconscious aspect to it. So on the one hand, you have like your conscious mind of, okay, this is what I want to say, or this is how I feel. But then there is an aspect of it where something kind of speaks to you. Uh, the ancient Greeks, called this the muses, which is to say they believe that the art was already out there. There'd be some angelic force or God or something or spirit that would come down and kind of whisper something into your mind. And that those ideas for songs or artwork or paintings that you had weren't necessarily yours. They didn't really belong to you. They, belo they were gifts from the universe in some way. And I think there's a lot of power in that. Um, Leonard Cohen talks about similar thoughts. Um, many other artists are, you know, also inspired in that way. Uh, Salvador Dali, uh, the way he would often come up with his, you know, wild paintings is he'd actually have a, a silver platter on the chair next to him and he'd like take a nap in his chair and he'd hold a spoon. And so then right when he'd be right about to pass into unconsciousness, he'd drop the spoon, and then the clattering of the spoon on the tray would wake him up right at that moment he started to dream. And then that's how he would be able to vividly remember images that would come to him in dreams. Um, and that would serve as inspiration for his paintings. And I too have had several uh, photos that came to me in dreams or while I was dozing off. So that's, part of why my process is leaving space for that kind of thing that you can't plan for. You know, like I will usually plan out a shoot to a degree, like if, you know, uh, I recently worked with a client and she had certain ideas that she wanted to explore. She had thoughts of, you know, exploring this I dual identity between like the family that, you know, like what her family expects of her versus how she is herself. And so 
you know, I'll, I'll plan that out. Um, but then I'm also very consciously will not plan it too much. Um, I know that, you know, there's other photographers will have everything very much planned out and they have a whole system. Um, like what works for different photo artists, you know, different things work for different artists. You know, there's an infinite a number of artists and an equally infinite number of ways to do art. Um, but for me, I found that having that space uh, really helps because there's something, there's something that kind of magical that can happen when you're not planning and when you're kind of just in the moment and seeing what the universe gives you. Um, and so that's kind of an awareness that I've been very focused on cultivating. Um, actually, for me, that really, that concept really took off about uh, three years ago when I was living in Tokyo. Um, someone had given me a copy of the Stephen Mitchell translation of the Tao Te Ching, which is an incredible resource. I post quotes from it frequently. Um, you know, one of the quotes that you know, really vibes with me is the idea that, you know, like the true scientist doesn't come with preconceived notions. They observe what is. The perfect traveler has no set plans and in fact is not even set upon arriving. The artist follows their intuition. So I have this sense that I, for, for me, I don't really see myself as being some great creator of ideas, but rather I follow my intuition. I listen for that little whisper. And I've found that the more you listen, uh, the more, the louder it gets. And honestly, it's amazing. Like it's been really, really helpful for me. Um, actually more recently, um, one thing that I've been doing is I've actually been experimenting with doing a lot of self portraiture, including nude and erotic work. And, you know, it's the kind of thing that like, you know, still kind of makes me really nervous to do and even more nervous to share. Um, when I first started experimenting with it, I shared it with a few, you know, artists and other close friends to kind of get their feedback on it and what their opinions were. And, you know, people were urging me to share it. They're like, oh my God, I love it. You know, you have to put, promise me you'll put this out there. And it took me like a year to kind of build up the courage to like put it out there in the world. But then the response has just been incredible. You know, so many people have reached out to me about how, you know, how evocative it's been for them and how much it's inspired them to explore themselves as well. Um, so there's a lot of power in that. Um, so that's kind of my, one side of my practice, which is to say, you know, having space for intuition and spontaneous creativity. Uh, the other side of my work is um, practice. So I shoot a lot. I've put in hundreds of thousands of pictures on, you know, many cameras over the years. I've shot with over 100 people already, uh, primarily people who are not models or, you know, otherwise paid to, you know, be in front of a camera in any way. Um, and so I've really developed like a sense of how to get people, how to get people to, you know, number one, look good on camera, and also more importantly, how to get people to feel comfortable on camera. Um, and I've found that it takes, you know, someone has never been in front of the camera, it usually does take, you know, several hours. Um, and I know that there are, again, photo other photographers who have a, a whole system of you know, set poses and things like that, and they'll get through an entire photo session in a, an hour or two hours. For me, I found that my favorite photos tend to show up about two or three hours into a photo session, and that's even with people I've shot with before. Um, I actually did a show when I was living in Tokyo, and I went through, a, you know, years worth of pictures and picked out some of my favorite photos from various sessions, and it was really interesting because almost every single photo I ch ended up choosing was had been taken within the last 30 minutes of the session. And I think it's because it takes time to become comfortable. Um, and usually for most people it takes, you know, a couple hours. And you know, one way I kind of explain this is, you know, if you have someone taking a group picture and you're there and everyone's like, okay, smile. And, you know, you'll have that fake smile and, you know, 
you'll hold it up and then like it gets awkward because you don't know what to do in front of a camera. You're like, ah, oh, smile. But, and so if you're taking a photo session, if you've never been in front of the camera before, you'll have that kind of response. But eventually, after a couple of hours of just shooting, eventually you just drop that, you know, you become comfortable in your skin and then that's the moment where your true self appears. And that's what I strive for. And you see it in the eyes. You know, when someone's totally comfortable, you know, like even if they have a trace of being nervous or I don't know what to do, you know, like it's okay. There isn't anything that you need to do. You just have to be comfortable and it takes time. And I found that there's, you know, it's easy to get there. Um, so, so that's the other part of my practice is spending time to doing practice um, and that's why actually before I take on any clients I'll always set up a session where we meet up and kind of talk and get to know each other for at least an hour or so you know over coffee or something and that's been you know incredibly helpful because I think that when you're doing a photo session the most important things are trust and rapport like you have to trust the photographer the photographer has to trust you too you guys have to be on that same equal footing and you know like I said I don't consider myself to be some great creator you know I'm I'm a photographer my job is to bear witness I can I know how to take good pictures of people I will get you know great shots from the very first picture because I've been doing it for a decade now but the real thing is having that rapport and that's the kind of thing that takes time, you know, ha and even, even when I'm shooting half the time, we'll just be like talking about life. And that's all part of my practice too. I found that that works incredibly well to, you know, loosen people up and get people ready to shoot. So yeah, those are the main things that I really wanted to talk about today. Um, and Hey, as long as we're here, I may as well talk about what I mentioned earlier about my own self portrait pra practice and yeah, you can read my testimonials. Lots of people have their own different ways that shoot work, working in, and doing boudoir photo shoots has helped them or given them different insights into themselves. Um, but let me talk about what my own experience has been. So, like I said, I'm, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm kind of camera shy. Um, and I've been, a couple of years ago, I started making a more of an effort to take self-portraits and get comfortable in front of the camera. I figure if I'm doing this to all these different people, you know, I should be able to handle my own medicine. And um, it's it's funny. Like I said, it takes time to get in front of the camera, and it takes time for me too. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but even just recording this, I'm pretty nervous. But when I set up my camera on my tripod and, you know, maybe go up in, to my back garden or take self portraits in my, in, you know, in my studio, like I've found it even, even for me, you know, even having done this many times over the years, it still takes me like an hour to get comfortable and to kind of relax and just be in the moment. And, you know, more recently I did a, a photo session of myself and I was about to like, call it quits. I was not happy with how it came out. I was trying to copy some poses that look kind of cool that I'd seen in, you know, some other photographers I know had, you know, posted some cool pictures. I was trying to do it myself. It was just not working. I was about to call it a night. And then I got, you know, some words of encouragement from a very close friend who texted me, um, right as I was shooting. And, you know, that was like kind of what I needed to kind of get my mojo and just kind of like, okay, like, yeah, like there's someone who's looking for it, who's all who hasn't even seen these pictures. They're already looking forward to seeing them, and that gave me like that boost of confidence to just like let go and be present and just take it places I didn't even expect, and just giving me the permission to to do that and not take it so seriously. And you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just pictures anyway. You know, it's not some life or death thing. It's, you know, it's just art. And, you know, the, the reaction was just incredible. Like I ended up having, you know, some cool pictures that I thought were kind of interesting. And then I shared them with some friends who just totally loved them and were just incredibly supportive. 
And then I decided to make a bold move of posting him on social media as well as on my blog. And um, yeah, just the words of support from other people is just incredible. Um, it made me feel really confident and sexy and more comfortable with my body. Like, you know, and that's an incredible feeling. Like, you know, I don't know if you can tell, but I've got a little bit of a little bit of a beer belly here. And, you know, that's something I've been very self-conscious about. And, you know, I've been uh, kind of agonizing over it and, you know, shaming myself and telling, oh, man, you should really go to the gym more. You should really, you know, stop eating fast food. Um, which is all probably true, but also just making myself feel bad about it, which is not productive at all. But kind of knowing that, like, oh, yeah, even, like, without preparing, even just, like, right now, after, you know, and this was, this was, these pictures were, like, right after Thanksgiving, you know? So it was just, like, even, even without preparing, as I am right now, today, is fine. It's perfect. I'm beautiful. And that was just such an incredible freeing feeling. Like, it made me feel um, sexy and, like, in my own skin and just, like, like, ooh, like, I'm not just, like, some person inhabiting, you know, some spirit inhabiting a body that I'm not thrilled with. I'm, no, like, this is me and, like, I am, I am sexy. Like, like, this is cool. Like, and it gave me, like, this kind of little dose of confidence and, like, like, oh, yeah. So, and so that's kind of been my experience with it more recently. Um, and, you know, really made me more aware of how much, how important that can be for people. Because um, Lord knows I shoot so many people that for me, it's like, I get kind of used to it. You know, people sometimes will have a reaction of like, oh, I've never seen a photo of myself like this before. And which is true, you know, like maybe... Like, you never see yourself because, you know, you see yourself in the mirror every day. You never see yourself as someone, how someone else sees you. And certainly not as someone who uh, has a kind of an endearing eye. Like, they, like someone who's has that eye of, of care and wants to see your best sides will always see you in a much different light than someone, than the way you see yourself when you're being critical on yourself. And, you know, or even the way you see yourself when you know, you're at a party and someone takes a group photo, like, of course, that's not going to be your best photo. You know, that's, that's a kind of a challenging situation for anybody. Um, but it's easy to, for, for me, at least, it's easy for me to forget, like, on how much of a fundamental level, that little boost of confidence of sexiness and being like, oh, I'm a work of art, like how much how important that can be. So that's, all I really had to say today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed listening. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. And yeah, thank you so much for watching.